In this video, I'll be going through and trying out the recently released beta for Astropad Windows, or currently known as Project Blue. If you find this video helpful, remember to like, comment and subscribe. For those of you who don't know the history behind Astropad's pivot to Windows, well, get ready for a brief history lesson. Astropad was the go-to app and program for using the iPad as a digital pen tablet on your computer, but it was for Mac only. At the time, there was no plan to make a version for Windows. Then, in June 2019, Apple introduced a new OS feature called Sidecar, where Mac users could use their iPads as pen display with their PCs. In other words, they Sherlocked Astropad. This was pretty devastating Astropad, but as sadistic as it sounds, one person's pain was another's gain. And Windows users, it was our gain. Astropad, in an effort to survive, pivoted to diversifying their content, stating their intention to release a new Windows version of Astropad. And it's finally here. Well, at least the beta version is. Currently, it's available to the general public to test it out and find out any bugs. So let's go through and see the features and see how it works. To get Project Blue working, you'll need to download both the app for iPad and desktop. I've put the link to the beta page below where you can sign up and download them. After you download it, you can set up the connection via either Wi-Fi or USB connection. For Wi-Fi, both devices need to be connected to the same network. And you can see that we are connected, just change the option to full screen and we are ready to go. Let's check out the current features available. So this dot opens up the options and settings. You can also move it to wherever you want it to. Tapping it closes it again. The workspace option opens up the toolbar, which holds the edit options such as undo, redo, shortcuts like brush, eraser, etc. And the options to customize them. And as you can see, some features aren't currently in it, but will be in future updates. It also has the option to toggle the keyboard and quick keys. You can move it around corner to corner. The pencil and stroke options allow you to configure a few options. The line preview option, color and visibility. So the trail left behind the stroke. The stroke preview, we can adjust how long it lasts. and the cursor of the pencil, which can be hidden when drawing. Currently, the pen pressure curve only has the two options to adjust it, but Astropad intends to change it with more control over it. You can also have smoothing with the three options, on, off, and a slider where you can adjust it. as well as the ability to reset it all to the default settings, but I've noticed that hasn't been working. The Matic Gestures option houses the available gestures, as well as the ability to customize and change them. The default options are the hold down gestures, so one finger in pencil stroke to erase, two fingers in pencil stroke to do a right mouse button click, and three fingers and a pencil stroke to press the modify key. Here you can see the tap gestures, just like normally using your iPad in something like Procreate. One finger tap to simply click something. Two finger taps to undo. And a three finger taps to redo. The move and zoom option is where you can edit the size on the actual iPad.
This can also be entered by pressing and holding down the door. The connection is where you can see the connection type and the current latency or response time. I'm currently using the Wi-Fi connection and you can see I've got a pretty good connection. Obviously the quality of your connection will depend on your Wi-Fi strength and hardware. So from my previous uses with the Wi-Fi, I've had the response time as low as 6 and as high as 40. When it's around 6, it feels more responsive than the USB connection, but the delay is noticeable when it starts creeping up to numbers like 20 to 40. The USB connection is pretty consistent no matter what. I noticed that the response time figure doesn't really apply. It felt the same when the response time said 6 and when it said 40. So if you're looking for a consistent connection without too much change in quality, then the USB connection is the way to go. Alright, let's do some proper tests. Here's the basic gestures of being able to pinch to zoom in and zoom out, and two fingers to move the canvas. So here I'm just using Photoshop with the uh, trail turned off so we can see the lag input. This is just testing out the Wi-Fi connection. And it's uh, feeling pretty smooth, feels good. I did notice a little bit of a jaggedness to the lines, but there's pen pressure, pretty good, pretty responsive. Gestures are working well. Yeah, and get the quick keys up, see how shift works. Just do a quick line test. So there's a register the strokes. Undo redo. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that you can actually go into finger mode. So if you tap and try to draw, prompt you to go into finger mode. And if you use your pen again, it'll just switch back to pencil mode. But this ensures that the palm rejection is good and that you don't accidentally click anything. Pinch and zoom. Let's just see how it works without the smoothing. Uh, I can't really tell the difference. Alright, let's see how it works via USB connection. So if your Wi-Fi isn't the strongest, USB connection I think is pretty good. It's pretty consistent. I don't really think the number shown really applies, because I've seen it at 6 and I've seen it at 40, and honestly I couldn't tell the difference between the two connections, whereas I could with the Wi-Fi. Quick stroke test.
So yeah, another crash. I've noticed that happens pretty regularly when I try to erase something in Photoshop. I'm not sure why that is though. So I'll just reset that and try and start the connection back up again. As you can see, it's pretty usable in Photoshop. As long as there's no issues that are like crashing for you, it works pretty damn well. Let's try it on another program. How about ZBrush? So we'll try that just with Wi-Fi connection first. Just so you can see how it all reacts. Screen isn't definitely isn't as crisp as before, but let's just see how functionality works. And this is where the quick keys come in handy. So they're all working well. Let's do a little bit of sculpting. Nothing too serious, of course, just a little bit of a play around. But overall, it's pretty responsive. The text is a little bit blurry, but if I'm just trying to sculpt, I don't really mind that much. Let's test it if it can keep up, and hopefully it doesn't crash again. Yeah, I can see a little bit of a stutter here and there. But overall, I think it's pretty good. Especially since it's a Wi-Fi connection. Alright, let's try USB connection this time. Alright, obvious different screen is a lot more crisper in comparison. But yeah, still super responsive. Try out the keyboard now just to get a new brush up. Yeah, and I really like this for Z brush. I've got almost everything I need there. And there we go, another crash. Well, 
well, I'll just get that fixed up and I guess it's a good time to go to another test. Let's see how it does mirroring something that's moving on screen like a video. So let's try out the Wi-Fi connection first. Shameless plug. So definitely keeping up, but definitely not as clear. You can see it's sort of pixely. So let's try a USB connection now. And straight away you can see it's a lot more clearer. But yeah, I think that's enough testing for now. So using the demo for around a week so far, the major two issues that I faced is the app crashing on the iPad and the desktop app not closing properly and chugging up resources. So as you can see from the previous day's use, it crashed again while I was erasing. I also noticed that it's mainly happening while it's connected via USB. To try and fix this, I have to close the app on the iPad and then restart the app on desktop as well. But I've noticed an issue where sometimes the app won't open again, and that's because it's still technically running in the background. And you can see in the task manager, it's there and chugging up resources. I think this mainly happened during a crash, but I did notice the first time it happened, I didn't have a crash yet, and yet for some reason the app was still running in the background. At the time of this video being uploaded, Project Blue is free and available to the public and it will continue to be for the next few months while they test out and improve the features before they release it to the general public via the App Store. Judging from the information available on their webpage, it can be safely assumed that AstroPad for Windows will follow the same pricing structure as the Mac version. AstroPad Standard goes for a one-time price of $29.99 US dollars and is limited to the basic functionality as can be seen on the graphic here. If you're like me and you're in Australia, it's going to be a bit more than that. For us, that'd be $46.99. AstroPad Studio, though, is a subscription-based app with all the functionality of the standard and much more, as can be seen on the graphic again. In other words, Project Blue is a more accurate glimpse of what the Studio version will be. It's available for $11.99 monthly or $7.99 annually. And again, this is US dollars. This is a fair bit of cash, but I have to mention that if you're a student or a teacher, you can apply for the education discount, which gives you 50% off those prizes. Overall, I'm pretty impressed by Project Blue and look forward to seeing the final versions. It's a product with potential. I'm not really sure how they'll go competing with the current apps providing the same service, such as Duet Display and Easy Canvas. Honestly, we can write off Duet Display straight away. Easy Canvas is a very good app and a very cheap app, especially in comparison to Astro. But I guess we can worry about that in the future. For the current time being, Project Blue is free to download and use, with updates to come throughout the coming months. So I definitely recommend trying it out. So again, if this video is helpful to you, please like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, have fun.